For you, anything. Thank you. Matter of fact, I just brought it out. What in heaven's name are you doing up at this hour? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, I had a very restless night last night, and then I uh, I woke up very early this morning, and I couldn't get back to sleep, so I decided that I might as well just get up. And then I decided that I might as well just come over here and bother you. Well, you better sit down. Joe? Kevin, Miss Higgins, all still asleep. And I have nobody to drink coffee with, and I hate to drink alone. Well, now, wait a minute. Joseph Riley, still asleep at this hour? You bet. He turned off the alarm, rolled over, and went back to sleep. Uh, he must have known that I was coming into his office today to talk about breaking my contract. That what kept you awake last night? Your decision to plunge into a new career? Mm, no. No, not really. I wish it were. Thank you. At least it would have made more sense. What is it, Pat? Does Tony know that I went to the Caribbean to get a divorce? Oh, hot cakes, Clara. Oh, no, Mama. I've already had more than I should. I can hardly move. Yeah, I guess the way that Dory Lloyd keeps pushing you around, maybe that's a problem. You tell me. Listen, sweetheart. Would you do me a favor? Sure, what is it? I know sooner or later that Doran Wood is going to start interfering with my department, you know, since she's the new chief of staff. Yeah, you're probably right. Yes, but I would like a little advance warning. Now, the minute that she gives you a memo on the housekeeping services, would you please run to that telephone post haste and let me know? Sure. Well, all this fair and war with Dorian Lord, but you better hurry up and do it, or I won't be able to give you that warning. Why not? Because I have pretty much decided to quit working for that lady and take Jack Scott up on his offer to be his secretary. Well, I just don't get this. I mean, you don't even get off work at 1 o'clock in the morning, and then you get up at 8 o'clock, and I went to bed at 10 o'clock last night. I can't even get my eyes open. How do you do it? And please, don't tell me it's you, because then I'm going to have to evict you. <laughs> Listen, I don't think it's you so much as love, Mrs. Hopkins. Oh, yeah. Well, I knew there was some kind of explanation. Hey, you know, I didn't tell you that I found, me and Peter finally found a place to live yesterday. You did? Yeah, um, Kathy Craig's cottage. It's near Karen and Larry Wallet. Do you know it? Well, vaguely. I mean, I've never been there. But if you're going to move in, I expect an invitation to that neighborhood soon, right? Of course. Oh, it's so darling. I mean, you'll love it. It's it's beautiful. What's it like? I mean, you got... Would you believe this? Somebody else is up and stirring around in Landview at this ungodly hour. Now, just don't forget where we were, huh? Mrs. Lord. Mrs. Hopkins, I need to see my... Yes, as a matter of fact, she's here. She's right in the living room, Miss Lynn. <laughs> well, it's not my sister that I need to see. It's Marco. Oh? Is, uh, is he up yet? Marco probably hasn't even been to bed yet. Must let's be up. Now, now, why do you want to see Marco? Well, among other things, I, I'd like to find out where he got $10,000. Do either of you ladies know? $1,000, Marco? That's right. Well, I knew that he was up when he started paying his rent on time, but $10,000? It's amazing, isn't it? My ex-chauffeur, the penty auntie hustler with that kind of money. Well, now, how do you know that he has it? Well, he gave Bradbury a check for that amount. Aha, uh -huh. but as he tried to cash it, it happens to be a certified check, so it means it won't bounce. Now, why would he give Brad Vernon $10,000? Well, it seems that he bought Brad out. What? Yes. My new partner in the health club is Mr. Marco Dane. Now, that sounds far too respectable for Marco. Not to mention too healthy. Astonishing, isn't it? My old partner in the club has gone to jail, and my new partner probably should. He knows something? 
My guess is that Marco Dane has found himself a backer. Well, I think you're putting it very politely. Yes. Anyway, I really do need to see him. Could you please tell him I'm here? Oh, I sure will. I'm also going to tell him that his rent is raised immediately. Well, uh, nothing to say now that we're alone? It's not that. I'm oh, sorry. I, I guess I've just been so preoccupied about the health club business and everything. Oh, is that it? I thought maybe you were afraid that the room was bugged. But don't worry, you can check. I mean, there's no hidden microphones or tape recorders. All right, Melinda. You know, someday Peter's going to find out all about you. I just hope you haven't broken his heart. Oh, don't you worry about his heart. I'll take good care of that. Oh, by the way, uh, we found a place to live. Oh, did you talk him into some big house that he can ill afford? On the contrary, I talked him out of a big house. Uh, we're going to be living in Kathy Craig's cottage. A cottage? Peter in a cottage. And he should be living in Landfair. Well, don't worry. We'll be very happy there. It'll be a perfect little love nest. Well, I wonder where Marco is. Relax, Dorian. He'll be down soon to save you from the conversation. You know what I think? I think you know where he got that money. I have the slightest idea. Oh, yes, you do. Since the two of you have become so friendly, I'm sure he's confided in you. Now, what makes you think that we are so friendly? Because he told you about the tape recorder, didn't he? Come on, Melinda, you can admit it now. Dorian, I'm really beginning to worry about you. Me? You're beginning to worry about me. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gordon, but your new partner isn't in his room. But I don't think he's been there all night. Well, he probably spent the night with his new backer. Right. right. Well, anyway, when you do see him, would you please tell him that I'm looking for him and it's very urgent. Yes, well, does he know where to reach you? Well, uh, well it could be either the hospital or the banner, depending on which, which one has more crises today. Well, I really <laughs> hardly have time to turn around. Well, I'm sure that your uh, interest in it more than compensates for the pressure, doesn't it? Yes, occasionally, but at times I, I wish there were two of me. Well, I really have to be going. Um, please, both of you have a lovely day. Goodbye. Two of her. Is she kidding? Could you imagine anything worse? Yeah. Well, that poor soul doesn't understand is she'd have twice as many enemies. Yeah, and she'd cause twice as many nervous breakdowns. You know something? You amaze me. It wasn't too long ago that all Dorian had to do was walk in a room and you'd fall apart. But now... Yeah, it's, uh, it's wonderful, isn't it? How did you manage it? Well, it's very simple. I learned to fight back. And I also learned that Dorian can be quite vulnerable. You know, Mrs. Hopkins, the tables have turned. Now it's Dorian that's uncomfortable. Yes, Pat, Tony does know you went to the Caribbean. And I didn't tell him for once. Wanda did. He was very surprised. Oh. Well, would you like to share those O's and wells? Oh. Oh. Well, well, <laughs> you know, when I was coming back on the plane, I was feeling really up and happy and excited, you know, because I was looking forward to going into television, you know, and having my own talk show. Well, I'm all excited about it, too. You're going to be very, very busy, but I would think it'll be terribly rewarding. Yes, well, that's the way I feel. And in fact, I thought that it would fill all of the vacuums that I have in my life right now. The only thing is, is last night as I was trying to come up with ideas for Dorian, you know, about people I'd like to interview and, and things like that, and all of a sudden I started to think about Tony. Aha. Uh -huh. So deep down inside all this time, you're wondering if you two can get back together again, and only now are you consciously aware of it. Hmm? I don't know. I mean, do I really want to get back with him, or... 
Or is it just out of habit? Because I'm afraid to be alone. Well, which do you think it is? I wish I knew. You still love it? Oh, Vicky, I, I'm so confused. What's love? What's need? What kind of relationship can we really have? I've never even told him the truth about Brian. You could start by telling him the truth and make a whole new fresh start. No. No, I can't do that to him. That's not the answer. I'm sorry, I don't have any answers for you. I know. I guess what I'm feeling now will work itself out with time, whatever time it takes for me to adjust to this strange new freedom that I have. You know, it's almost as if I was starting out all over again, and, and there's just a whole world out there, and, and yet it just doesn't feel the same because I've lost so much. Will you pour me some coffee, please? I'll be down in a minute. Yes. You watch, he'll be down here in two seconds grumbling because I let him oversleep. Yeah, well... I'll tell you something. I'm getting out of here. Oh, chicken. <laughs> You're darn right. Uh, listen, Vicky, thank you um, for the coffee and uh, for listening as usual. Good luck. <laughs> Why you didn't rouse me out of bed this morning? Yes. I figured if you turned off the alarm and went back to sleep, you needed it. Thank you. Don't you know the banner cannot function if I'm ten minutes late? No, actually, I didn't know that. Well, we'll just buy a new newspaper, won't we? Was I dreaming or were you talking to somebody down there? You were not dreaming. I was talking to Pat. She has a very bad case of the Tony Lords. Thank you. Oh, you mean she wants to get back together with me? She isn't sure. I am. She wants to. She hasn't admitted it to herself yet, but she wants to. So you have definitely decided to work for Dr. Scott? Yes, I have. And I know you don't approve, so you don't have to tell me. But what if I do want to tell you? Then I guess I'll have to listen. Well, I doubt it. Yeah, you listen. But you always don't hear. Mama, this is the point. They're both very demanding. But at least I respect Dr. Scott. I feel that in addition to being a very fine surgeon, he is probably, basically, a very decent human being. And that's more than I think of Dorian Lord. Yes, well, maybe Dr. Scott will be demanding of more things than you think. Like uh, energy, loyalty, devotion, and probably time. And they're things that should be saved for your marriage and not wasted on your job. Are you telling me I shouldn't go to work for him because of Ed? <laughs> Tony! Well, I certainly hope you're not at the hospital for some medical problem of your own. No, no, I just came in to see Jim. Oh, actually, I was visiting Richard. How is Jim? Well, physically, he's fine. I think he's pretty depressed, though, about Kathy leaving town. You know, all of these comings and goings, I mean, Kathy leaves, Pat comes back. Pat is back. That doesn't make any sense to you. No, none whatsoever, just the opposite. It seems to me if I have to go to work for that woman and stay cooped up with her for 10 hours a day, and I come home in a lousy, rotten mood, that would harm my marriage. Oh, no. We both have very different ideas about this move. But I happen to feel pretty good about it. Let me ask you something. Are you changing your job with the Dorian Lord just to get away from her, or are you trying to work for a famous doctor and get in on the glory? Oh, Mama, that's terrific. First you think I'm jeopardizing my marriage, and now you're implying that I'm becoming some kind of medical groupie? <laughs> well, you certainly are getting on the defensive. Why don't you just answer the question? Mama, if Jim were still the chief of staff, don't you think I'd keep my job? But it had nothing to do with the job. It has to do with the fact that he was such a wonderful person to work for. I'm in a rut. I've been there nine years. When Dorian moved in, I found myself getting irritated all the time, and not, not just at her. But the fact that I could do most of my job in my sleep, 
Now, what kind of a challenge is that? Well, I mean, do you call working for Dr. Scott with all his arrogance and his demand for perfection? Now, is that the kind of challenge you want? I don't know, but we will see. And we will see. Yes, I'm quite sure we will see. So when you ran the picture of Becky Lee Hunt in your paper, the only one to show any interest at all was Luke Jackson. Uh, but, uh, I mean, other than old friends, who else? Uh, specifically, Silas, I'm, I'm thinking of the authorities, the police. Yes, huh? Oh, no interest in knowing where Becky, Be Becky was at all, huh? Okay, interesting. Very interesting. No, no, I'm, I'm really not at liberty to say why at the moment. You sure, definitely. Uh -huh. There's a good story here. I'll let you in on it. Right. All right, thanks for your help. Bye-bye. Mr. Riley, who are you talking to about me like that? Silas Henderson, Becky. He's the editor of the paper that ran your picture in your hometown. You were asking him about the police? Mr. Riley, you're going to get us in a lot of trouble asking about things like that. Well, Becky, I'm trying to gather information, and believe me, it gets more intriguing as time goes on. You know, there's something very strange about this murder you supposedly committed. What? Nowhere is there a death certificate uh, for Jesse. Nowhere in the county. But how can that be? I don't know, honey. Furthermore, the police down there haven't got the slightest interest in finding you. If they did have, they'd be up here soon enough to arrest you. So it all adds up to no body, no murder. Yeah, but I can understand that, knowing Luke. Uh, would you explain that to me, Becky? Nobody down there knows Jesse's dead. I mean, if they did, Luke have to tell him I killed him. He doesn't want to do that. Then I'd have to go to jail. All he wanted to do was to have something to keep me with him. And that's what he keeps hanging over my head. He says, if I don't do what he tells me to do, he's going to tell the police, and then I'll go to jail. I see, but what about Jesse's body? Oh, I know what he did with that. He probably buried it over in Corinth Bend, right next to Jesse's mama. Corinth Bend? Yeah. That's where he put Jesse. I know that's what Luke did, and that way he can prove I killed him any time he wants to. <laughs> Stop it. Mr. Abbott? Oh, turn out the lights. Yes, yes, will you please tell Dr. Weber that it looks like Becky? Mr. Abbott in room 507 is regaining consciousness. Becky! Yes, thank you. Mr. Where's Becky? Just you. Come 
something? Sure. You're not looking for sparkling money conversation. By looking at you, I don't think I'd find it here. the truth, when's the last time you got some sleep? Uh, let's see. Last night I think it was between 6 and 8, and then the um, night before that, between 5 and 6, something like that. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. You know, you could collapse like this. What's wrong with that? Get some sleep for a change. <laughs> I don't know, Pam, I can't, uh, I can't turn off my mind, I can't. I mean, here I am, you know, head of psychiatric services at Landview Hospital. My son is in prison. 